people who are engaged in the Resilience Project are often supported by a day program and a residential program. Sometimes also have a mental health worker, a therapist involved. And at the beginning of the project, we notice sometimes that people are kind of operating in their own silo about um, what they're doing with that person during the time that they're together. Resilience Project, we invite all of the people to the table all the time, once a month to check in to go around what's going well in this person's life, what are the challenges we're up against, and we help facilitate a whole team approach um, into someone's system of care. The whole purpose of it is to include everyone to the conversation. Let's get on board together and wrestle through this with one another. And a lot of people come to the table reluctantly. What is this? Another meeting, another group. But then we have people saying, when's that meeting? You know, when can we get together? Because it's it's really life-giving. It was a lot of training and a lot of training with the providers and the families to be able to come to them, enlighten them about this project where families were somewhat hopeless about, you know, that we have done this so many years. And what else can we do? You know, she's been, they've been institutionalized, they've been this, they've been that, and we've been dealing with this so long, what else can have, can help us? If we didn't bring in the training for the families and training for the providers, we were doing a disservice to the client because the client, we would try work with the client and teach them the skills that they needed to learn and connect them to the community pieces. But if their providers or their family was not, involved then when they got home we all kind of all fall apart um, and it, it has turned out to be very helpful the clients that have a full participating team are the clients we see the most success with our hope was that we could get on the same page uh, with the person about who they were why they were the way they are now and what we could do together operating from a shared framework and a common understanding that would help the person get on a path to healing and really start to um, have an opportunity to be the best of who they were. We put this big piece of paper on the wall and we, start, we put a line on it and we start from in vitro and we go to their current age and we talk about everything that has happened in their life. And not only do we do the trauma, we look at the resiliency piece. What has happened in their lives to help build this resiliency? Changing the question from what's wrong with you to what happened to you um, puts a whole different approach on the way that we're able to explore and, and, and support recovery. I think as you, when you walk through that life of the individual, they some, somehow it connects to you. Even if you've never been abused before, you can. When you hear the story, it shows you an individual at a, a different lens. People would come into the room with a piece of the story of who the person was or what had happened in the past, but hardly ever the whole story. And after a while, we have this rich and detailed picture of this person's life story. If you find that something happened in their in their past that you had no idea. Mm -hmm but you see that it was ongoing and you kind of see that they did this because of that, mm -hmm. that's the, the part that you're like, oh, you just wish you had a nun. Yeah. Had I known that prior, like I would have handled certain situations differently. Sometimes I wish I could just go back and somehow help them in mm -hmm. a different way. Now that we have that resiliency piece, yeah. so much better. It kind of helps you understand and see it. it it's not just a chart, it's not just a client. It, it's a human being and somebody that you're able to connect with on a different level. I even see staff connecting with each other on different levels now, which is really, really exciting. Often what we, what we see over and over and over is people are not connected in their communities. They don't have uh, places of belonging, they don't have connection. Holistically and for the most part, the individuals that I support do not have friends do not have friends, which is a very painful thing to say out loud, right? Yeah. The more research they were doing on trauma and brain chemistry, the more they learned that it's through connection that we're hurt, and it's literally through connection that we heal, and we get the most reward in our brain for positive relationships. We get the most terror from humiliation, isolation, segregation. 
And that's, I think, the real power of the resilience worker. Our job is to go out with people and connect them to the other people and places in their neighborhood that share their same gifts, interests, and passions. We're not just getting rid of problems, we're helping people find their potential and find their purpose. It takes our individuals away from being segregated and allows them to connect with the community, with the community that we all live in. The primary thing is build a future where they're living to their highest potential so they're no longer defined by their trauma um, but that they are able to blossom um, and, and become, become themselves. Part of the history of services is that people think that they're designed to fix broken people. With a trauma lens we try to shift that from fixing broken people and thinking about what's wrong with people but um, shifting into what are all the remarkable skills and strengths this person has demonstrated to survive what they've been through and how can we take those and build on those. I have seen a great deal of reduction in aggression, in vulnerability, um, in risky behaviors as a result of this project in almost everybody who in, in everybody who has participated i'm not even going to say almost everybody how did they get there i have to say connections not just connections to their uh, resilience worker right but connections to communities that value them we started with the sense that everybody deserves to live just a happy life the best life that they can that, live. Yeah. That, I mean, just, and that's what we focused on, like, day in and day out. Mm -hmm. And we're a small agency, yeah. but we have some huge results. And we live by that. I know it's been hard for this population to change yeah. because we didn't have the, the knowledge that we have now. But I think everybody has to start doing this. Mm -hmm. I it, agree. It's the yeah. best way to help the people that we serve. It's the only way, in my opinion, to truly help them. Yes.